What's up everybody? I am walking outside right now because we are going over to Orlando Executive to fly over to Tampa, Florida to talk about why I chose sales. The weather looks lovely today or as good as it can be for Florida. So I'm excited to get over to Tampa and talk to you guys about why you should probably think about sales too. Well, let's go. All right, so that was a pretty quick trip. The weather in Tampa is looking pretty crappy. Welcome to Florida. You can't really plan for the massive thunderstorms that we have on a regular basis. So I came back here and we're going to be talking about why I chose sales and why sales might be awesome for you as well in the house. Let's go. So a little bit of background. I've been in sales since I've graduated college and even took a sales program to get into my first sales job. My first sales job was actually outside sales. I was there for about five years and in four, three different states three different states, went from Florida to Georgia, Georgia to California, and then California up to Seattle. I was not only in a field sales role where I had to produce numbers, but I also was in leadership and sales trainer roles at that time at the company. Experienced a couple other different companies as well where I performed average to above average, and I do have the coveted Outside Sales President's Club award. For those of you that aren't in sales, President's Club, Winner's Circle, whatever you want to call it, it's essentially being one of the top sales reps in the company for a calendar year period. Now that I have about nine years total being in sales, both in outside positions and inside sales and leadership and, and then of course number producing roles, I've got a pretty good understanding of why I chose sales and how it's impacted me. So the very first one I'm gonna start on is one that I didn't actually know I wanted or really needed even though I kinda had the idea in my head. And that's autonomy. Any kind of sales role is one of the few jobs that you really do have a very autonomous schedule. You can basically do what you want if you're hitting your numbers. Yes, there are the managers that like to micromanage, the people that are always asking you questions, and there are tons of calls that probably waste a lot of your time to walk through your pipeline or what's gonna close in the next month. A great example of this was actually my first sales role. I spent five years, and of course those three different states, being a road warrior, spending time in a plane, spending time in my car, I didn't really have an off. And outside of the normal coaching and problem solving you would do with your sales, manager, there wasn't really any kind of calls or communication in regards to what are you doing from nine to five. If you were closing deals and you were bringing in your quota, the amount of stuff that you needed to sell in a single month, then you really didn't have to worry about what that particular schedule is like. Now, while autonomy is great, there is also a reason that not everybody is in sales or everybody's looking for that autonomy. And the reason is that you need to be a self-starter. If you can't be the self-starter or the responsible person to wake up and still have to get stuff done without somebody coming over your shoulder, then sales probably isn't the right thing for you. But if you're really confident that you could get in there, start your day and close numbers, then I think the autonomy that you can get in a sales role is going to be something that you are going to absolutely love. And it's something that I still love today. Number two has to do with closing deals. You control your income. Not many jobs allow you to basically control how much money you're going to get paid. But a lot of sales roles, outside, inside, doesn't really matter. You have a base salary that's probably a little lower than most and then a commission structure that doesn't have a quote unquote ceiling. All that really means is that the more you sell, the more money you can make. This kind of ties back into making your own schedule and making sure that you are a self-starter. If you control your schedule and you make sure that you hit your numbers and maybe want to go a little higher than your numbers, then you are going to be raking in a lot of money. And most likely, depending on what you're selling, you're going to be providing a lot of value to people as well. This was a really important one for me because I like to work. I like to work hard. I like to spend a little time outside of work working. It's, it's a problem. It seriously is a problem. But this was one of the few jobs that you can actually take that extra work, that overtime, if you really want to call it overtime, and actually go and make more money. You control your income. Where a lot of times you have to work overtime or you just work extra at home and no matter what, your salary is your salary. It was important for me because I had debt when I graduated college, I wasn't used to having a paycheck, and I wanted to make sure that finances, money, wasn't going to be a problem. I also had a general idea that I wanted to become financially free and I wanted to invest in certain things. And to do that, you need more money. 
Number three is something that I realized after I started to get into the leadership side. And of course, now that I'm in the startup world, how important sales actually is. Number three is that a lot of people in executive level positions have had some hand in sales or have been successful in sales prior. I think there's two big reasons to that. One is that sales, as a sales professional, whether that's outside or inside, and no matter what industry you're in, you have your hands in a lot of different parts of the company. You're essentially one of the main cogs in bringing in deals and revenue into the company to continue the other organizations. And so your hands are touching marketing, any kind of logistical things, like for us actually implementing a certain software. So what that really does is while you're also being a sales professional and talking to clients and figuring out how to bring in deals and bring in new business, you're also having to deal with a lot of stuff on the back end. So you're kind of getting a view of all different parts of the company. Any kind of C-level, director level positions, especially in leadership, you have to have a good Good understanding of what's going on in the company as a whole and not just one silo. The other thought behind a C-level or a leadership role actually having some kind of experience in sales is that the company doesn't grow without sales coming in. Sales is a crucial part of a company growing, period. If you have the best product, if you have the best service, it doesn't matter if you actually have no one buying it. So for the C-level to really understand what's going on in the company, to be able to listen to customers, you've got to dive into the sales side and be really good at it. Now, how does that tie into why I chose sales? It's because I wanna be in leadership. I wanna start my own company organization, even if it is small. I wanna be able to do that, and one of the best ways to get this kind of experience in every single company that I've joined has been on the sales side. If you're interested in getting into leadership, if you want to coach, if you want to train, if you want to impact and inspire other people, if you want to start your own company, a really good place to start would probably be to experience a little bit of outside or inside sales. Number four for me is something that I've talked about a lot and what I talk about in this channel, and it's really about personal development. Why I chose sales, not only back in school, but also looking back on my last nine years, is that Sales forces you to grow up. It forces you into confrontational situations. It forces you to learn how to communicate things that you're not necessarily forced to do in a lot of other roles. I feel it's easier to escape these kind of situations, the ones that are really tough, the ones that are really uncomfortable, in a position where you don't need to talk to people every single day. You don't need to ask for the business. It's a lot easier to avoid that when you're not in sales. While it's definitely a focus of mine to have that personal development and continue to grow, it might not necessarily be yours. So if you want to get better, if you want to continually grow every single day, sales is another great place to actually look to do that. I've improved my communication, my one-on-one -on -one communication, getting up in front of people and talking, being able to actually use some of the sales tactics and the way you ask questions and the way that you respond and the way that you listen. Things that actually not only help in the sales world, but also in your own personal life as well. I can tie things like communication, like listening, back to my personal life. So those four reasons are the reasons I I chose sales, especially looking back on my last nine years and why I think if you tie to any of those, agree with any of those, and those sound interesting to you, then it might be a perfect reason for you to take a look at sales as well. Thanks for watching everybody. If you liked the video and this is actually kind of moving you towards sales a little bit perfect, if you now hate sales, awesome, go ahead and press the like button because either way it helps you make a decision. If you like this kind of content and you like some of my other videos, go ahead and press subscribe and press the bell next door to it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and I promise the next time if we are not getting crushed by thunderstorms, we're going to go flying. See ya.